I'm Josh Ratner from Health Alliance in the Hudson Valley, and this is Health Alliance in You. Today we'll be speaking about the flu with Dr. Mark Tack, President of Ulster County Board of Health and Director of Infectious Disease at Health Alliance. Every year, new strains of influenza develop that we have to adapt to, and this year is no different. Dr. Tack, thank you for joining us today. So what does this mean that it's prevalent? Well, the health department has confirmed that uh, there are multiple cases of influenza confirmed by both culture and other detection methods within Ulster County and pretty much prevalent throughout all of New York State. The good news is it's not too late. There's still an opportunity for you to go out and get a flu shot and uh, get prevention. So we hear that the flu shot is the most effective way of, of preventing the flu. Can you explain why that is? Sure. The flu shot uh, contains antigens, uh, which, are, which are proteins that uh, your body reacts to and makes antibodies. And these antibodies are then ready to go and fight if you should get exposed to the flu. Unfortunately, the flu virus changes from year to year. And so you have to get a vaccine every year to adapt to the various strains. Um, it has been shown that also that over time, generally over about a year, your immunity to the flu vaccine will wear off, which is why, again, we recommend an annual influenza vaccine. Okay, I got it. So uh, who should get vaccinated? Pretty much anybody over the age of six months should get vaccinated. Certainly people who are at high risk for influenza, such as the elderly, those people with chronic medical conditions, and the young between six months and, and five years are at the highest of risk, and all of that population should be vaccinated. So seniors and pregnant women are more susceptible to getting the flu, or are they just more at risk? Well, both. They're, they're more susceptible to getting influenza, but more importantly, they're, they're more at risk to getting severe cases. Uh, people, tens of thousands of people die every year from the influenza virus. I think there seems to be a lot of myths about the flu shot. Uh, can you help dispel or, or clarify some of those myths? Well, certainly the one we hear the most is, I got the flu shot and then I got the flu. Exactly, there you go. That's not possible, uh, except there, there's one vaccine, the nasal vaccine, which does have a live virus, but the shots are all dead virus. There is no live virus. It is absolutely impossible to get influenza from a flu shot. On the other hand, when you get any vaccine, you may feel a little sore, a little, you may even feel a little low-grade temperature or soreness for 24 hours. That's just your immune system appropriately act, reacting to a vaccine. No, well, that's perfect because I'm sure there's lots of people at home thinking that you can get the flu from the flu shot. Yeah, it can't, can't, can't happen. Good. In fact, now in New York State, healthcare workers, including those at Health Alliance, are now required to get a flu shot to protect both themselves and the patients they take care of. And if they don't get a flu shot during flu season, they're required to wear a mask anytime they're within a patient contact area. So you probably get this question a lot, but how can somebody tell the difference between getting the flu or having the flu and being sick with a regular cold? Well, one of the, the things that always happens is, you know, flu season is also respiratory cold season. So, but the cold is, uh, you know, an achy, runny nose, sore throat, sniffles, do I want to go to work kind of a day, uh, or do I want to just take it easy and, and rest? Influenza is like someone hits you across the head with a baseball bat. You're, <laughs> you're sick. It's high fevers, headaches, body aches, and it's, it's a much more severe illness. Nobody dies from the common cold, but as I said earlier, tens of thousands of people can die from an influenza virus. So if somebody thinks they have the flu, uh, what should they do? They should contact their physician immediately or seek medical care. There are now antiviral medications that can be prescribed uh, and that can fight influenza, but they really have to start within 24 to 48 hours of the symptoms in order to be effective. And are there complications with the flu, or what are some of the complications? Well, people, people can die just from influenza, but if you're... Uh, unfortunately, you can get the flu and then get secondary bacterial infections, such as bacterial pneumonia, sinus infections, hearing problems, uh, and other complications, including organ, organ failure. Wow, there's a whole host of problems then. Influenza is not a cold. It's a serious, life-threatening life uh, virus that needs to be taken seriously. Uh, can you give the audience a little sense of how is the flu spread? 
The flu is spread from person to person in droplets. When people sneeze, when people cough, the droplets get out into the air and onto surfaces. You can either breathe them in or you can touch them, which is why hand washing is your first defense besides influenza vaccine. Wash your hands, wash your hands, and wash your hands some more. How long is somebody contagious once they get the flu? Generally, for if, if they go untreated, meaning not given an antiviral medicine, they're contagious for either five days or 48 hours after the symptoms start to be uh, to fade. Okay, so there is a, there's a period of time there where they have to be cautious. Well, I, absolutely. Uh, in the hospital, we place patients with influenza into isolation so that they don't spread it to other patients, visitors in the hospital. At home, hopefully, patients will stay at home. And if a person in the house has influenza, there are medications that can be given to besides the vaccine to help prevent family members from coming down with influenza as well. So let's talk about that. Obviously, people at home don't have an isolation room that they can, uh, they can use. So what are some tips for pe people at home to help keep the flu at bay with the person that's infected? Sure. Well, the first step is to be vaccinated. So ideally, right. everybody in the house would have been vaccinated. That said, um, if, you, if your person in the, your house has influenza, the physician or for the family doctor or internist or pediatrician can prescribe uh, antiviral medication for prophylaxis, for prevention for the rest of the house. Also, again, hand washing, hand washing, covering your mouth when they cough or sneeze, uh, and cleaning environmental surfaces aggressively will all help stop transmitting virus throughout the house. Does hand sanitizer really work? Well, that's, up, that's really up for debate these days, Josh. The CDC has just actually issued a requirement that uh, the, or I'm sorry, the FDA, forgive me, has just issued a requirement that these companies that advertise these hand sanitizers are going to have to prove their benefit in order to continue to do so. The alcohol-based hand washes that are available certainly do work. Well, thank you, Dr. Tack. This has been very helpful information. Thank you, Josh. We hope you, the viewers, found this edition helpful in answering your questions about the flu. Remember, it's not too late to protect yourself from the flu this season. Go get your vaccine today. That's all the time we have for today. To get more health information or to view this episode again, visit hahv.org. I'm Josh Ratner, and this was Health Alliance and You.